Common Speaker John Burko has selected four amendments to be put to the vote. Well, with me now is Meg Russell, Director of the Constitution Unit at University College London, to talk about what they mean. The first amendment has been put down by Labour's front bench. It rejects the, deals, the deal because it fails to provide a permanent customs union and strong single market deal, but it also rejects leaving with no deal and commits to pursuing every option for a different agreement. Um, Meg, if that's passed, what does that mean? Uh, well, I'd say that's probably quite unlikely to be passed because what it's saying is really we don't like the government's version of Brexit, we want Labour's version of Brexit and that's likely to get support from the Labour side and maybe not much wider than that. Um, but what it would be doing would be rejecting this deal, saying we need a different deal and that deal needs to see a closer relationship to the EU based on something like customs union and single market membership. Right, now the second amendment chosen by the Speaker has been put down by the SNP implied Cymru. It declines to approve the agreement, saying it will be damaged for the nations and regions of the UK as a whole. It also calls for the UK's departure from the EU to be delayed. How would that work? Well, also I think that's probably quite unlikely to find support because it's coming from the Scottish and Welsh parties and again it's quite a party political amendment which is really expressing their opinions on this deal from a Scottish and Welsh perspective. It should be said that the, the way the voting will work is that if any of these amendments are accepted then you will move straight to the vote on the motion as amended. So there's a motion down from the government saying we accept the deal essentially. The first two amendments from Labour and the SNP are both saying we don't accept the deal in which case that would be incompatible. Um, we can't really go on much further. We just move straight to the vote on the motion as amended, and that would have, in effect, have sort of killed Parliament's support for the deal. Um, then we move on to some amendments which you're probably going to explain, which are a, a bit more constructive, perhaps. Yeah, this is the third amendment chosen by John Burke, as the Conservative leader Sir Edward Lee. Now, this amendment wants the Northern Ireland backstop to be temporary and to remain temporary. Now this is at the heart of so much in terms of the disquiet here, isn't it? What this is trying to do is calm the nerves of Conservative MPs who are particular, and the DUP as well, who are particularly concerned that the so-called backstop will result in a potentially, if it's reached, and everybody's saying they don't want it to be reached, but it's there, it does what it says on the tin, it's a backstop, it's a last resort. If that point is reached, then that would see um, Northern Ireland having a different and closer relationship with the EU than does the rest of the UK. And this is very offensive to people who believe that Northern Ireland is part of the UK and must be treated on an absolutely equal basis to the rest of the UK. So what this amendment is trying to do is calm the nerves of people who are worried about the backstop and enable MPs to support the deal while saying this is sort of... Um, it's contingent on us taking a certain view on the backstop and kind of rejecting the backstop or limiting its ability to control us. Right, let's just have a look at the, the last amendment uh, to be debated. That's John Barron's amendment. If approved, this would give the UK the right to end the backstop without the agreement of the EU. Now, how would that work? <laughs> well, that's a much tougher yeah. amendment than the, than the Edward Lee amendment. And as I said before, they will vote on these sequ sequentially. If the Edward Lee amendment were accepted, you would then go on to vote on the government's motion as amended. So you would be... So this would effectively be dropped? This would be... The, well, the Barron amendment yeah. wouldn't be reached if the Lee amendment were agreed. Right. You would move straight to voting on the motion as amended by Edward Lee. Um, so, in a way, I suppose the Barron Amendment is kind of a backstop, if I can use that terminology, to the Lee Amendment. If the Lee Amendment isn't, doesn't go far enough and doesn't get support, it's tougher. It says we will unilaterally be able to get out of the backstop. What that means at the EU level is rather questionable, and whether that would have legal force is rather questionable, because the backstop is actually part of the legal agreement between the government and other EU states. Practically, looking at the timing of this, uh, it starts at 7 o'clock, four amendments. How, what time do you think we're looking at a vote tonight? Well, because MPs go through the division lobbies, votes take quite some time. They take sort of 20 minutes or so. It depends on how many people are voting. I would anticipate that virtually everybody will be voting here. These are some of the biggest, most important votes we've seen at Westminster for decades. So we're, we seem to be talking about a vote on the... The, the main motion, once all the amendments are dealt with, about, about sort of 8 o'clock, 8.30 this evening.